director of the Stinger Research Unit at James Cook University in Cairns. He is the world's leading researcher. I'm now talking about arguably the world's most venomous animal, something that could sting you and kill you within 120, 180 seconds of being stung. And we know diddly squat about it. It's quite scary. I mean, we, we don't know, for example, where the animals breed. To be honest, we don't know how they breed. We don't know how long they live for. We don't know how many offspring they produce. This deadly creature is an apex predator and is known to hunt and feed on shrimp and small fish. They do this extremely efficiently using their long and powerful tentacles. If you book a jellyfish as being sort of your standard run-of-the-mill four-cylinder car, box jellyfish are the Formula One of the world. I mean, they have a V8 engine. These things swim at two and a half, three knots. I mean, that's, that's about the speed of most people that you can normally swim. They've got the most potent venom that we know of. There is no other animal in the world that can kill you as quickly as a box jellyfish. Seymour's research into the deadly venom has led to a new understanding of how these creatures kill so effectively. The venom from these things is by and large a cardiac venom, so it attacks the heart. You get stung, it's dropped directly into the circulatory system, or the veins and the arteries, goes straight to your heart, and the venom is very, very specific. By and large, if you have more than three or four meters worth of tentacle on your body, you're pretty much dead before we get you out of the water. So, and, and, there's, and there's not enough, not a great thing you can do about it. If as experts like Seymour believe, jellyfish populations are expanding, the effect could be devastating. I've seen them operate in the field in a, in a group of two, corral up a school of fish, and one just swims through, grabs a swift fish, and swims away. Now this is not an animal that's just widely blundering into things. This means that if what Seymour is suggesting is true, jellyfish are targeting their prey. Now most people will argue this. I mean, I've been to conferences where I've suggested this and had you know, my peers go, no, you're out of your tree. These animals are 96% water, no brains, they can't do this. Seymour will lead the Monster Quest science team in conducting an analysis of video footage that could clearly show a box jellyfish navigating and hunting its next victim because it's hunting fish. I mean, and that means it can get into this complex environment, it can chase fish where other jellyfish can't get. And that's one of the advantages of having all this. But there is no way you can do this unless you can see what's going on. And that's what sets these things apart from all the other jellyfish. Box jellyfish are equipped with 24 eyes, which gives them a 360 degree view of their surroundings. Certainly I've had them in the tank here where they will swim up to meet you. I mean, the animals you know, have some sort of visual structure there. They don't have a brain as, as such, so we don't know how the heck they process these images. The possibility that these creatures possess some form of intelligence poses an even greater threat to mankind. The Monster Quest expedition team is beneath the surface of the water. The area's predators are feeding and it makes the conditions even more dangerous. We got everything. Corraldi, sharks, barracuda. Oh, there's the sharks. Oh, we got three or four of them around us now. <laughs> the men are surrounded by gray reef sharks and have no communication with the boat. If they are attacked, they will have no backup. They must get out of the area. Luckily, they find the boat and manage to escape the sharks. We saw one little shark off to the outside. We're like, oh, hey, there's a little shark. And all of a sudden, boom, I saw one go. You're filming one. All of a sudden, boom, there's another one behind you. Boom, there's another one behind it. And I'm like, all right, we got three. We got four now. And the next thing you know, it just got crazy, man. I seen him come right up underneath you. I was looking at you from above. I was like, God, I wonder if he sees that thing. That's pretty close to him. And all of a sudden, it just came like right underneath your arm, right under the camera. The team is not completely out of danger. There are reports of a violent cyclone brewing to the north. And it is carrying 70 mile an hour winds and torrential rains. And it was just getting gnarlier and just, just heavier and heavier. Monster Quest is searching the Pacific Ocean for a monster jellyfish invasion. The jellyfish population in Japan is 100 times greater than 20 years ago. 
Many experts say global warming may be causing this. In 2006, Nomura jellyfish blocked the seawater cooling system at a nuclear power plant in Hamoka, Japan. Authorities had to shut down the plant in order to avoid disaster. The invasion killed millions of fish. The jellyfish also attacked fishermen. The scary thing is the tankers. We are all scared of the jellyfish. Because the sting is so itchy, we fishermen cannot keep working. The Nomura jellyfish is one of the largest in the ocean, measuring more than six feet wide and weighing in at over 450 pounds. This astonishing video is evidence of the monster jellyfish bloom that clogged the Sea of Japan. The man who shot the video is trying to understand why. It was never studied before, so we know nothing about them and have to start learning about them from scratch. Naoto Honda is a researcher for the Fisheries Research Agency in Tokyo. He has been studying these creatures for six years. Until recently, we hardly saw them, but five years ago, they started to appear in large numbers. There are several theories as to why the Nomura took over the Sea of Japan. There are many theories why this particular jellyfish increased in recent years. For instance, one of them is jellyfish started to increase near the Chinese coastline because of the pollution in their waters. Honda believes there may be another explanation. No. Another theory is that global warming has caused jellyfish to grow more easily. The Japanese government has asked Honda to locate and track these animals to figure out why they keep invading the Sea of Japan. He's targeted Sagami Bay, an hour's drive from Tokyo. Honda will use sonar and underwater cameras to locate the Nomura. Once he finds them, he will use a tracking device he designed to follow the animal's movements. The device fits like a belt around the Nomura and transmits a signal to a satellite which then relays information about the Nomura's patterns back to his office. The creature is not hurt, and this one-of-a-kind tracking system may provide vital information as to why these creatures invade when they do. The Nomura is not lethal, but its sting is still extremely painful. I was scared of getting too close to the jellyfish because they were bigger than people. Honda was attempting to attach his tracking system on a Nomura during a research trip. I was working on tagging the jellyfish. I got too close and the tentacles touched my face and I felt pain. At the time, I wanted to complete the job I was doing, so I endured the pain. Honda now wears a full face mask when handling Nomura. He and his team arrive at their first dive location. The maximum bottom is a 14 meter, and uh, water temperature should be uh, uh, 16 degrees. I'm going to take care of the Honda son. Honda enters the icy waters. Hi, Honda-san. Uh, how are you doing, the button? Uh, are you okay now? Uh, 
how about the jellyfish? Are there jellyfish out there? Wow. But Honda has spotted a starfish on the bottom of the ocean. Then normally, uh, no starfish are there. There will be a starfish out there. It's unusual, I think. Honda believes the starfish is a significant discovery. They are usually only found in tropical climates. This bay is not considered tropical, and the team is diving in the middle of winter. The presence of a starfish indicates a significant rise in water temperatures and supports Honda's theory that global warming is responsible for the increase in the Nomura jellyfish population. Honda-san, how was Zushi diving? Zushi no diving, how was it? Very beautiful. Shall we go to looking for uh, Nomura jellyfish? Maybe up there? Around there? Yes. The team heads to deeper water. It's a riskier dive because of the danger of stronger currents washing the diver out to sea. Honda believes taking the risk is worth it. The Honda-san is ready to dive now. Honda finds he is in a strong down current. This is an area of the sea where the seafloor drops off and strong currents push out towards open water. This makes it difficult to stay at the appropriate depth. It can prove deadly, even for an experienced diver. Honda-san, do you have any current? I don't have any current. Uh, okay, uh, the boat follow you. Honda continues to fight the strong current. Honda-san, can you hear me? The current is taking its toll on Honda physically. Can you see a normal jellyfish? No. Nothing. Yeah, no, no more jellyfish. Okay. He's convinced the Nomoras are growing in number, but the conditions are too brutal. It becomes too dangerous to continue. Honda calls off the rest of the expedition. Check, check, one, two, one, two. Obviously, the jellyfish that can kill you on contact is the one that's sticking in my mind. Australia's tropical cyclone Charlotte has forced the southern part of the Monster Quest expedition team to move further south. The divers are racing to get into the water before the rains force them to abort their mission. What the captain's done is he's moved us off towards the edge of the reef where the water's a little bit deeper, a little bit more current here. We're not going to be able to actually get in the water and stay here by the boat because of the current, so we're going to do what they call the drift dive. We're just going to get in the water and let the current take us where it takes us. This will allow them to cover more area. The current will be running that way, so they won't have to worry about it too much. They can just drift with it, and uh, we'll just move slowly down the reef with them. And then when they surface, uh, we'll get them to come just away from the reef a little. We'll go in between them and the reef, and they'll pick them up in deep water. They're hopeful the stormy conditions above the water will not affect the visibility below the surface. Not too much paint in the water here, so that should be good visibility for the cameras. Team leader Dale Pearson drifts along the reef, keeping a watchful eye for jellyfish and other predators of the deep. The reef is alive with marine animals. Yep. The boat's captain spots a jellyfish floating in the water. He dives in to capture it. You have the long trailing tentacles as well as the bunching tentacles. Uh, both of them can sting. And uh, on the top of the bell you'll see there's some uh, rougher texture on the surface there. Some of the texture on the surface there has got uh, stinging cells in it as well. They quickly determine it's not the lethal box jellyfish. Uh, this one will probably give you a sting you certainly know about it, but um, not life-threatening, not like 